How's it going everyone, it's Fiber Optic Broadbean here, and first of all I would like to give a huge thanks to each and every one of you for tuning in to watch my content, because you guys have helped me reach the milestone of 100 subscribers. This means a great deal to me. So in order to celebrate reaching this point, I decided to make this video for you, where I'll be telling you about my top 10 favourite Pokemon of all time. Bear in mind that these choices are based on my personal opinions, so feel free to tell me about your favourite Pokemon in the comment section below. With all that being said, let's get into the countdown. Sliding into the number 10 spot is the Sludge Pokemon, Muk. Though generally an unpopular Pokemon, this purple amorphous creature is quite the fighter. I like Muk for a couple of reasons. One is its appearance in the anime as Ash's Muk. Here, Muk showed strength in battle, where it overpowered many of its foes with relative ease. It made lots of battles seem such a breeze. It may move slow, it can't jump high, but this mons. One hell of a guy. <clears throat> anyway, Muk also had a softer, friendlier side to it, often showing affection for its trainer and Professor Oak. Another reason as to why Muk is on the list is that it's pretty nifty in battle, with a nice range of moves and some decent stats to boot. However, it's not the most viable Mon, as it's held back by the ever-prevalent Psychic types. To combat this, Muk received an Alolan form in Generation 7, which is a Poison Dark type, thus providing it with a fantastic defensive typing, with an important immunity to Psychic types. Pretty neat. Overall, I think Muk is a pretty cool Pokemon, and that is why it is taking the number 10 spot on this list. Taking root at number 9 is the coconut Pokemon, Exeggutor. Another rather oddball pick, I know, but I've always been fond of Exeggutor. There's just something about how goofy this Pokemon's design looks that I find hilarious. It's a palm tree with legs, what's not to love about that? Anyways, Exeggutor has a pretty neat grass psychic typing, which although leaves a bit to be desired defensively, that's an understatement, it still has a decent enough typing to take advantage of its high special attack stat of 125. It can also have the ability Chlorophyll to have some fun in the sun. Speaking of which, in the sunny conditions of Alola, Executor gained its very own Grass Dragon type Alolan form, packing more of a punch with this base 105 physical attack. This took a rather interesting turn to say the least, and although I could talk about one of its most defining features, that would take a pretty long time. So long in fact that this video would be of an unacceptable length if I did. Scorching its way into the number 8 spot is none other than the blazing Pokemon Darmanitan. Darmanitan is an awesome fire type, with a very nice creative design. In its standard form, it has an absolutely monstrous base 140 attack stat, which when coupled with its ability Sheer Force, really accentuates the power this Pokemon has behind it. Darmanitan also gets access to a unique hidden ability, Zen Mode. When this ability is used, in situations where Darmanitan has reached low health, it switches to its fire, psychic type Zen Mode. This form has a much greater special attack stat, as well as higher defensive stats than its standard form, but this comes with the cost of a far lower base speed stat. While this ability is rather unpopular amongst the competitive battling community because of its inconvenience of activation in battle and how situational it can be, I still think that's a pretty cool feature that can really help to set Dalmantan apart from a lot of other Pokemon. This is why Dalmantan is here on my list. Coming in at number 7 is the Scarecrow Pokemon, Cacturn. This prickly Pokemon is a humanoid, nocturnal creature, and I've always thought it has a really neat design. For a Pokemon that is based on a cactus of all things, it actually looks surprisingly cool. Seriously, who knew that they could make a cactus cool? Just look at that face. It's pretty awesome. Not only that, but the spines covering its body give Cacturn a menacing appearance. You really would not want to meet one of these guys in the back alley, let me tell you. Anyways, the Savage Cactus is not only on my list because of its appearance and design, but also because of how fun it is to use in battle. Cacturn has base 115 in both attack stats, making it a large threat to teams on both the physical and special side. While Cacturn is a tad held back by its subpar speed, 
it does get access to a nice ability in Water Absorb, giving it a pretty useful immunity. Overall, I like Cacturn quite a bit, and this is why it sits at number 7 on my list. Taking the number 6 spot on my list is the Aurora Pokemon, Suicune. Being the mascot of Pokemon Crystal, and one of the beasts resurrected by ho alongside Entei and Raikou, Suicune is pretty legendary, in more ways than one. I prefer Suicune to the other two legendary beasts, not only because I generally have a preference towards water types, but also because I just love how serene and graceful it looks. It gives off an impression of elegance and sternness, making it pretty awesome in my eyes. In its Pokedex entries, Suicune is said to race around the world to purify fouled water, and embody the compassion of a pure spring of water. In terms of competitive battling, Suicune is able to function very well as a bulky setup sweeper, due to its nice bulk given its pure water typing and solid base 115 stats in each defence. Suicune also made an appearance in Pokémon Tournament as a playable fighter, which is pretty sweet. So overall, I like Suicune a lot. What about you? It is a okay, that was genuinely awful. I am deeply sorry. Coming in hot at number 5 is the flame Pokemon, Infernape. I really love Infernape's design, making it my personal favourite starter Pokemon of all time. It was also one of the first starter Pokemon I ever recall seeing, well, as a Chimchar that is, so for that reason, it does hold a rather special place in my heart. When it comes to the Gen 4 games, without a doubt, I always choose Chimchar, as in my opinion, Infernape is just awesome. Though no disrespect to Torterra or Empoleon fans, those mods are pretty awesome too. Thinking about it, the Sinnoh starters were all really solid. Anyhow, my opinion may have also been influenced by Infernape's appearances in the anime as Ash's Infernape, where it performed amazingly in battle. A particular focus was given to its blaze ability. With regards to competitive battling, this primate Pokemon doesn't monkey around as a solid starter choice, with very nice stats across the board, able to function as both a physical and a special attacker. Having access to Stealth Rocks, Infernape is also able to function as a sacrifice lead, making it a very versatile Pokemon overall. This is why Infernape is taking the number 5 spot on my list. Ooh boy, we're getting into the serious territory now. I was going to add some sort of pun here, but screw it. Taking the number 4 spot on this list is the Drill Pokemon, Nidoking. This reptilian Pokemon, in my opinion, looks epic, with its intimidating appearance and its well-armoured front. I've always loved its design, and on top of this, Nidoking is a formidable foe in battle as well. It has an absolutely incredible move pool, giving it a huge range of coverage options, with access to many moves such as Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, Sludge Wave, Earth Power and Surf, to name a few. With this move pool comes some pretty solid base stats all round, with both high attack and special attack. Where Nidoking really shines however, is in its hidden ability, Sheer Force. An ability that boosts the power of moves with secondary effects, of which Nidoking has a ton. Combine this with a life orb, and you have yourself one powerful Pokemon. The combination of Sheer Force and life orb with Nidoking has won me many a battle, and this, as well as its design, is why it takes the number 4 spot on my list. Clawing its way into the number 3 spot is none other than the pincer Pokemon, Kingler. Yet another rather strange choice, I'll admit, but I do really like Kingler. Let's start by looking at some facts. The evolved form of Krabby has a gigantic claw, which is said to be as hard as steel. If that's not at the very least awesome, I don't know what is. Kingler is even strong enough to pry open Cloyster, which really shows the power behind this Pokemon. To be exact, its pincer has a whopping 10,000 horsepower strength, which is absolutely insane. I love Kingler for these reasons, along with many others. It really is deceptively powerful. Another reason as to why Kingler is ranked so high on my list, or should that be so low, is because of its appearance as Ash's Kingler in the anime. This has been a reason for some of the Pokemon on this list, 
but King Lou was truly amazing. While its appearances were few and far between, in its debut battle against a favourite of the Indigo League, Mandy, Ashes Kingler single-handedly defeated an Exeggutor, Cedra, and a Golbat. It even beat the Exeggutor as a Krabby, which, considering the type disadvantage, is really impressive. On top of this, I really love to use Kingler in competitive battling, as it has stellar ability in sheer force, which allows it to take full advantage of its monstrous base 130 attack stat, as well as moves such as Liquidation, making it a truly dangerous Pokemon. In my opinion, Kingler is highly underrated, both in battle and design, and that is why it has taken the number 3 spot on my list. And here we are, at the final two. Claiming the second place spot on my list is the punching Pokemon, Hitmonchan. This humanoid Pokemon evolves from Tyrogue if its defense stats are higher than its attack. I like the Hitmon evolution line in general, and I think both Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Top are also pretty cool, but when it comes down to it, Hitmonchan is ultimately my favorite of the three. One main reason as to why I like Hitmonchan is because I needed a fighting type on a team I was creating. Now, at this time, I knew very little about the Hitmons, but I thought they looked pretty cool and would be a good fit for my team. I then had to decide which of the three to use, and after watching a number of strategy guides, I decided that Hitmonchan was the right choice for me. Since then, it has really grown on me and has become one of my favourite Pokemon. Its design, in my opinion, is pretty awesome, with it being a boxer, thus having a design centralised around punching things. Its Pokedex entries are pretty sweet too, with its punches said to be faster than a bullet train and able to pulverise even concrete. Hitmonchan is even said to possess the spirit of a professional boxer, which is pretty awesome. In terms of competitive battling, Hitmonchan is a pretty solid Pokemon too, with a fairly decent attack stat and an awesome special defense stat. It is able to take full advantage of its hidden ability Iron Fist, which boosts the power of punching moves, and it also gets access to Rapid Spin, which is able to get rid of entry hazards. So overall, like Kingler, I believe that Hitmonchan is highly underrated, and I love both its design and how it plays in battle. Also, a neat bit of trivia for you guys, Hitmonchan's Pokedex number is number 107, which actually happens to be Little Mac from the Punch-Out series, weight in pounds, which is pretty cool. It all comes down to this, the Pokemon it all boils down to, my number one pick. I had to spend a lot of time deciding upon which Pokemon is fit for this spot, but I have finally come to a conclusion, my favourite Pokemon of all time is... Bidoof. Nah, just kidding. Taking the number one spot on this list is none other than Rotom. I absolutely love pretty much everything about Rotom. From its design, to its multiple forms, to its use in competitive battles, Rotom is just an all round fantastic Pokemon, in my opinion, so I'll begin by talking about its multiple forms. As an electric ghost type, Rotom is able to possess a number of different electrical appliances, namely a microwave oven, a washing machine, a fan, a refrigerator, and even a lawnmower. Once it possesses an appliance, it gains a new typing and appearance, as well as enhanced defenses at the small cost of lower speed. Furthermore, in Alola, it gained a new form in the Rotom decks, an interactive Pokedex possessed by Rotom with many different features. For me, this really sets Rotom apart from other Pokemon, and while it isn't really a legendary Pokemon, this is a feature that really makes it stand out to me. If I were to pick out a favourite form, it would have to be Rotom Wash, due to the fact that it has my favourite design and typing. Initially, however, what really sparked my interest for Rotom was obtaining a set of Pokemon figures and instantly taking a liking to Rotom's design, especially after witnessing the havoc it was able to cause in the anime. On top of this, Rotom is amazing in battle, with some solid bulk, good special attack and a wide range of choices with regards to typing, Rotom certainly has a lot of coverage. It even gets access to Will-O-Wisp, which burns the opponent, halving their attack stat thus boosting Rotom's defensive prowess further. So for these reasons, my number one favourite Pokemon is without a doubt, Rotom. So with that guys, we have reached the end of the video, so once again I'd like to thank all of you a bunch for helping me reach 100 subscribers. 
and of course for tuning in to this video. Feel free to leave your opinions in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.